starting a new year, and so uh, we're going to be talking about a priority that God has. Really, this is God's number one priority. This is God's number one purpose for humanity, and that's salvation. That was the whole reason why Jesus came. That was the whole reason why he lived and died, was to redeem mankind. So this is really the key. This is the whole purpose of the church is to reach the unreached. And the title of this message is The Divine Scavenger Hunt. The Divine Scavenger Hunt. And the, the point is, is that God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God's called each one of us to run our race with purpose and grace. Purpose and grace. So we're going to be talking about purpose today. Because, you know, why are we here? Or we could ask the question, why did Jesus come here? Now, hopefully you have the answer to that. The answer to that is to redeem mankind. So then why is the church here? We're here to help bring in the harvest. To help bring in those that Jesus died for. And so, um, that's the purpose for us. That's the whole purpose for why we're here. And in 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy 1.9, it says, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which he has given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. His own purpose and grace. And, and here's the thing. Purpose is the reason for which something exists. It's the reason why something is, is in existence. The purpose of Christ, the purpose of the church. And, and grace is God's ability. So God's given us the ability to fulfill the purpose that he's called us to, which is to reach the lost. You, are, you have everything you need to succeed. You have the Spirit of God. You have the anointing. You have even the boldness. We just need to believe God for it. But, but God's given us that. So it's God, God's purpose. We're here for God's purpose, and we're here with God's grace. And so, we must run the race of grace, the, the race that God set before us. You know, because any race you run, without God's help, is going to be a failure. It won't work. Now, in Hebrews 12, why don't we jump over there real quick. Hebrews chapter 12. This is a, an important race that we're in. And, uh, you know, the title of this, I know it's a little edgy, it's God's Divine Scavenger Hunt. But that's what reaching out the lost is like. It's like a scavenger hunt. It's like you're going out and you're seeking and you're, you're pursuing and you're looking. Just like that woman who lost one of her ten coins in her house. What she did, she cleaned the whole house until she found that one coin. Or the, or the shepherd who, who loses that one sheep. He leaves the 99 and he's scouring the the. Uh, mountainside, and he's scouring through the prairies. He's looking everywhere. Why? Because he's looking for that one that's lost. And so that that's what we're called to do. We're to be reaching out and helping and, and reaching those for whom Jesus died. That's the purpose for the church. And so, you know, there's obstacles in this race, but we're called to the race. In, in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so we, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. He's, he's the example. He's the one who... Who we should be following his, what he told us to do. And, you know, Jesus was all about reaching. He, he didn't go to the Pharisees and the religious elite and, and try to get accepted by them so that he could have favor with them. He went to the poor. He went to the down and out. He went to the hurting. He went to the broken. Jesus came to heal. Jesus came to restore. And that's what we're supposed to be doing as a church. And, and that means that we need to be reaching out to people. That means that we need to be reaching out to people. Even people who come into this building, into this church, 
There should not be people leaving this building who don't feel like this church cares. That, you know, people need to say, say, you know what, there's a new person. I need to reach out to them. I need to shake their hand. I need to spend a little bit of time talking to them, finding out about them. People who don't know that you care, that they'll walk out and, and they won't probably come back. We, we need to have the mentality in this church that we are a family and we are all inclusive. We embrace people. People may look different. People may act different, but we're not a clique. We're inclusive. We include people. We love people. Amen? Amen. That's, that's what this church is about. It's about loving each other. It's about loving people. And when new people come in, embracing them and loving them. Because that's the heart of God. It's love. Amen. So, so in he, as we read in Hebrews, there's a race that we're called to run. And we've got to avoid weights and sin and things that would cause us to not be able to reach out. You know, if you have sin in your life, you're, you're not going to have boldness to go out there and share the good news. You're, you're, you're going to walk without that boldness. We need to walk before God with a heart saying, you know what, God, I love you and I want to please you. And what pleases God is reaching the lost. That's what pleases Him. God, God desires all men to be saved. That's his heart. To, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. To be saved. That's his number one thing is salvation. Reaching the lost. And that's what Jesus displayed. Let's jump over here to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. You know, God's good. He's an awesome God. But you know, he doesn't work alone. He needs... People who will join with him, joint workers, people who will come together and work the plow with him. God always uses people. When he delivered Israel out, out of Egypt, he used Moses. He used a man. He said, I'm going to deliver him, but then Moses came along. He, he called Moses to do it. When, when he was bringing Christ in the earth, John the Baptist was the one who ushered in the, the, the ministry of Jesus. And so he set the stage. God is calling us to usher in his second coming. And it's going to come through reaching the lost. Loving those who feel unloved. And so we need to have that heart. And Jesus, that's the heartbeat of Jesus. Now in Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 27, it says, after these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. You know, tax collectors were not the most popular fellows back in Jesus' time. I don't think they're real popular now, are they? Uh, I, don't, I don't really like to get a phone call from anyone who's involved with taxes. I prefer not to. You know, I mean, who, who wants that? Nobody. People will look at the IRS. Well, I won't get into that. We, we, we've read the news, right? <laughs> All right. So, um, so Jesus, he reached out to, uh, to Levi, who was a tax collector. And they were considered thieves. They would, they would uh, be told to collect this much, and then they would just, you know, fluff it up a little, and... And the people knew it. They knew they were getting robbed. So, so they weren't the most popular people. Jesus goes to the tax office. And he calls out his, his disciple. Out of the tax office. Wow. I, I mean, if I'm looking for, for a disciple, that's probably not the first place I would probably look. But I'm not Jesus. Jesus, he, he's really incredible. Amen? Amen? Amen. But look at this in verse 18. It says... So he left all, rose up, and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast in his house, in his own house. So Levi, the tax collector, opened up his house, and he said, you know what, we're having a great feast. And, and the people that he invited, he, he just opened his door to everybody. And it says here, Then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house, and there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. And
And their scribes and Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered, Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now it's interesting that, you know, Levi, he didn't just embrace Jesus, but he, he threw a feast and he invited all his sinner friends to come to this feast. He invited all his sinner friends to come and hear what Jesus had to say. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about, let's not just you know, live in a cocoon where it's just all about us Christians and we're, we're isolated and we're insulated. But we need to reach out to the lost. We need to reach out to the sinners and, and, and be, be you know, ministering to them, loving them. That's the love of God. That's what is going to draw people to Jesus. It's the love of God. That's the reason why Jesus went to the cross. That's the reason why people receive him is the love of God. And so, you know, Levi, actually, he was, uh, he was doing what we should all be doing, inviting people, you know. We should be inviting people to church. We, we need to be inviting people to, to feast, inviting people out to a lunch or a dinner, reaching out to people, helping people. You know, if people don't get close enough to us, how in the world can we reach them for Jesus? And that's the problem. If you've been a Christian for a long enough time, you, you have your Christian friends, your Christian circles. You go out, out with them. You have girls' night out with just Christians. You, you get insulated. And we don't want that. God, that's not God's heart. We need to invite and reach out and, and be friends with people that aren't saved, people who need Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, you know, Jesus' mission was a divine scavenger hunt. In Luke 19, verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man has not come to seek, uh, I mean, for the, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was what? Lost. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. What can we do to 
reach those who don't know Jesus. I can remember when, when Norma and I were in youth ministry, we would uh, do a scavenger hunt. Does anyone ever do a scavenger hunt? Anybody? That, you know, and, and they can be challenging. There was this one, we, we were telling them to look for a, a phone booth. You know, the kind that, like, Superman gets into? <laughs> well, I think there was only one in town. Only one. <laughs> so, it was a race to, to find that one. Norman and I, we stumbled across that one, and we were like, yeah, let's put that one in a scavenger hunt. And really, you know, that's what we should be doing. We should be in hot pursuit of the lost. We should be saying, man, this is God's heart to reach the lost. We need to reach out. What can we do? To reach those who don't know Jesus. <coughs> Boy, a little tickle here. All right. So let's jump over here real quick to Luke chapter 14. Because we can get a real picture of this. Luke 14, starting in verse 12. It says here, Then he said to, to him who invited him, when, when you give a dinner or a, a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor your rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you, receive, and you be repaid. But when you give a, a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. So what he's saying is God will reward you for, for reaching out, for, for helping those who need a, a touch from him. Those who need Jesus. And then he goes on to share a, a parable with them. He says, Now when, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited men and sent his servant and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see to it. I ask that you have me excused. To another, he said, I, I bought five yoke of oxen. I am going to test them. I ask that you have me excused. Still another, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it, it is done as you have commanded. And there is still room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste of my supper. See, heaven is a big place. Heaven is a big place, and there's lots of room there. And God doesn't want it just to be... He wants heaven filled up. That's what God wants. God is looking to fill heaven up. And as a church, we need to be the ones out there helping him to get, the, you know, to get heaven filled up. And so that's our job, to be you know, involved in the divine scavenger hunts, looking for people, going to those places, the highways and the byways. I mean, your work might be one of those places. You know, wherever you find the lost, that's a perfect opportunity to reach them for Jesus. And that's what, what it's all about. That is the whole purpose of why we're all here, is to reach those for Jesus. You come here, you get encouraged, you hear the word, but then you go out and you share the good news with somebody. And that's what it's about, sharing the good news. <laughs> See, God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. As a church, that is our ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. We're, we're saved to serve the lost. That's what it's all about. 
And in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 20, it says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, but has committed to us the word of reconciliation. We in the church have the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And that's what it's all about. You, when you got saved, when you, when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you also got a commission. Your commission is the ministry of reconciliation. Reaching out to people who don't know Jesus and sharing. Sharing the good news. And that's what we need to be doing as a church. That's what we need to be doing as a fa church family. We need to win them. You know, we, we must compete by the rules if we want to win the prize. It's about, you know, how are we going to win the prize? You, you know, if you play football, the prize is, you know, winning a championship. But you, you've got to do a lot of things right. You've got to play by the rules. You can't be holding someone and, you know, tripping someone up. And it, the play is going to get called if you do it wrong. And, you know, so there's, there's certain rules to the game of football. Well, also, there's a rule to get people saved. And you know what that rule is? It's serving. It's serving people. It's loving people. And if we serve them and we love them, then we're going to reach them. And so, you know, um, if we want to win the loss, we've got to do it the way God has called us to do it. Serving people. Loving people. Helping people. Reaching people. And if we can't do that in this in this own in, uh, I get it right. If we can't get that accomplished here in our own building by loving people who just come in the first time, then then we're going to fail in reaching those who haven't come into this building. We've got to reach those who came in. We've got to show them that we love them and that we're there for them. Amen. Amen. In Second Timothy two. Verse 5, it says, and, all, and also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. 2 Timothy 4, 5 through 8. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Now, I know this is speaking to Timothy, but, but really all of us need to be doing the work of an evangelist, reaching out to those who don't know Jesus. For I am, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. The faith. Finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only, not, not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearance. So God wants to be giving us these prizes. He wants to give you rewards. And the rewards are going to come by winning the loss. Reaching the loss. There are prizes. You know, there, you're not going to be able to take your car, your house, your camper, your boat, your, your clothes. You can get new clothes in heaven. Isn't that great? <laughs> uh, you're not going to be able to take them with you. But there is one thing that we can take with us. And that's people. We can reach people for Jesus. They are our trophies. If you want trophies, go out and reach the lost for Jesus. Amen? That's the ultimate championship. Amen? Let's reach the lost for Jesus. We win the, we win the prize by winning the lost. That's how we win it. In 1 Corinthians, just got a couple verses left. A few more verses left here. Let's jump over to 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, starting in verse 19. It says here, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. See, Paul's race was all about winning. But it wasn't about winning some trophy or 
winning a gold medal. It's about winning the loss. That's the ultimate trophy. Amen? And, and so he, he wants to win. And, and the thing is, it's, he became a servant to them. He became a servant to them to win them. That's the strategy. That's the, the, the heavenly strategy is to be a servant to reach the lost. <coughs> and to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without the law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ. That I might what? Win those who are without the law. It, it was all about winning people, serving people, loving people. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have you're probably not going to, everyone you reach out to, you're probably not going to bring them all with you. But you've got to reach them. You've got to reach out. No, during Jesus' ministry, he didn't, he didn't get everybody when he walked on the earth. There were people who rejected him. There, there was whole towns that wouldn't let him in. But Jesus still reached. We've got to reach people. We've got to help people. And it says, now I do this for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker with, with it, with partaker of it with you. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? This is still in context to winning the lost. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Run in such a way that you may obtain the prize, which is the lost. Where, what, what's our priorities? What is our purpose? This year, 2014, we need to say, okay, how can I get in line with God's purpose? Winning the lost. We need to begin to look at people and say, they need Jesus. And, you know, I have them. And I'm going to give him to them. I'm going to share my faith with them. And so we need to be looking. We need to be seeing everybody out there who doesn't know Jesus as a prize. Prize for the king. It says, run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we do it for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, as uh, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. What he's saying is, I am not shadow boxing. Someone who beats the air, they're, they're not getting anything done. I'm not, I'm not just shadow boxing. I'm making an impact. And, and you know, boxers out there, that, anyone here ever watch boxing? Yeah, it's not the most thrilling thing. But, I mean, I've watched it a few times. Anybody watch Rocky, the Rocky movies? <laughs> you know, if they swing and they're not connected, they, they made no impact. They made no impact. God is saying that He wants you to make an impact. Not He just wants you to go around hitting people, okay? <laughs> but He wants you to make an impact in the lives of people. He wants you to make you. He wants you to be an impact to those who don't know Jesus. So that's how we win the prize. And, and it, it goes on. It says, "Therefore I run, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air." But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be dis <clears throat> disqualified. So it's, it's winning the lost by serving them. Reaching them. Loving them. 1 Corinthians 10.33 says, Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. The whole purpose of Paul's ministry was to reach the lost, to save the unsaved, to, to reach those who were in darkness. He, he, he went from town to town, from city to city, from house to house, wherever he could find an opportunity to share the gospel. He was on a divine scavenger hunt. He was reaching into those dark places. And sometimes he was successful, and sometimes he got stoned. He got stoned a few times. 
People picked up rocks. He was beaten. He fell among false brethren. He, he was shipwrecked at a point. I mean, th there, there were things, obstacles, things he was going through. But he, it didn't stop him from fulfilling his race. It didn't stop him from sharing the whole purpose for why God had called him. And that was to reach the lost for Jesus. Amen? Amen. We, we are going to encounter things. We're, not everyone is going to have a smile on their face when we share the good news of the gospel with them. They should, but it doesn't always happen that way. And so we need to just love even our enemies, love those who are not loving us back. We need to share the good news. You know what? That love will, will bring conviction to people. Look, look at Stephen, the first recorded, recorded martyr in the Bible. Think about this. He gave his life... He was stoned, and Paul was one of the ones who were involved. He was actually holding all the jackets of all the guys who, who stoned him. And, and can you imagine the impact that must have made when he saw Stephen looking up into heaven and giving glory to God? When he saw Stephen say, God, forgive them. Just like Jesus said that. God, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And then all of a sudden, something happened. He had an encounter with the Lord. We need to love people, even when they are at their worst. We've got to love them and help them and serve them. That love is what will draw them. And who knows, there might be a Paul in the group. We might reach someone who's going to reach the multitudes. There had to be someone to, to, to reach, you know, Billy Graham and Oral Roberts and a lot of these other men of God and women of God. There, there had to be somebody who shared the good news. And they didn't know that it was going to make that kind of an impact. You have the potential of transforming this world, even reaching one person. You, you just don't know what God's plans are, how God can use them for His glory, or how God can use you for His glory. See, God's called us into the world, so let's go. That's what we're called to do. We're supposed to go out into all the world. And this is the last scripture right here in Mark. Chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. We're, we're, uh, this is the, the last words that Jesus spoke before he ascended into heaven. Starting in verse 15, he said, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. These are tools that God's given us to reach the, the unreached. And so the disciples, what they did was they just listened, and they went. It says, so then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And it says, and they went. Amen. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. Amen. See, we wonder why God isn't using us the way we want to be used. It's because we, a lot of times we're not in the race. See, when, when you're reaching out to the lost, that... You're, you're giving God something to empower you. See, the purpose of, of us being here is to reach the lost. And, and the grace that God gives us is to reach the lost. And if we're not reaching the lost, then we're not going to be experiencing the grace because we don't need it. You don't need it unless you're actually... You don't need the anointing to, to share the gospel if, if you're not going to share the gospel. There's no reason to, to be expecting it. But when you step out and you're like, you know what, I'm going to reach the lost. I'm not, and I'm going to help this person who, who is away from Jesus, who doesn't know Jesus, who needs salvation. I, I don't want them to go to hell. You know? When we have that kind of a heart, God's like, you know what, you're, you're fulfilling the purpose. Here's the grace to do it. Now, I mean, God gives you grace to live your daily lives, yes. But, but if you want grace to reach the lost, you've got to get out there and reach them. Amen? And so it's, it's all about that. It's, it's letting God use us to, to change this world. So we need to find a need and fill it, find a hurt and heal it. That, that needs to be our attitude. 
Find a need and fill that need. We need to serve the lost. Show them the love of God. When we show them how much God loves them, they're going to want to serve Him. You know, they, they, they're going to want to receive the precious gift that we have because they see His love. It's the love of God that should be compelling us to reach the lost. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for each person here today. I thank you, Lord, for the purpose that you've given us, the purpose of reaching the unreached. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us not only the purpose, but you've given us the grace to do it. And Father, I know that you're helping us. You're opening up opportunities. You're giving us favor with those that we need favor with. Lord, you're opening up doors to reach those who have not been reached before. Lord, you're giving us boldness to, to share the good news and to invite them to church. And so, Lord, we just thank you for all that you do, all that you're doing in us, all that you're doing through us. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. With every head still bowed, every eye closed, if there is anyone here who has never asked Jesus Christ to come into their hearts and to be their Lord and Savior, if there is anyone here who has never made that commitment to Christ, I just want you to raise your hand because I want to pray for you. I just want to pray for you.